Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. This show is about one thing and one thing only, turning your gym into a thriving business you love to own. So if you want to know what it really takes to grow your membership, make more money, and build a rock-solid community of raving fans, you've come to the right place. All this information is 100% free, so please subscribe to and review our podcast. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Gym Breakthrough Podcast. I'm Marcus Gersey, and today I am joined by Mr. Mike Turnquist, co-owner and resident stud at CrossFit Ergo in Paso Robles, California. Mike and his partner, Steve, who unfortunately couldn't join us today, um, were members at their facility, and they loved it, but it wasn't necessarily going as good as it could, so when the opportunity to buy it came up, they saw an opportunity to save their gym and make it what they knew it always could have been. And so they did just that, and have been working on turning their business around and really making it their own since. That said, like most gym acquisitions, uh, it wasn't as easy as it looked. So uh, Mike and Steve signed up for the Gym Breakthrough program so that we can help them get it right. And now they are well on their way to running a gym that not only their members and staff will love, but they love as well. So Mike, such a pleasure to have you on here with us today. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Marcus. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah, my pleasure, man. I've been looking forward to it. Um, Mike, tell us a little bit about you and uh, like before we get into CrossFit Ergo and and the story of the evolution, I, you have a whole nother life outside of gym ownership land. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story and how you kind of ended up becoming uh, an owner at CrossFit Ergo. So I, I run a uh, real estate business as um, that's been my career for the past 19 years and uh, have a couple of teenage boys and they're pretty active in sports and school and, and, uh, spent a lot of time coaching them growing up. And, um, so it was back in 2011. Um, there was just a regular gym here and they kind of started a cross program. Um, they called it a cross really program. It, yeah. They didn't really know what it was. And they saw me kind of, uh, the trainer would see me upstairs doing intervals on this treadmill and like kind of supersetting things. And she said, Hey, you got to come try my class. And it's called cross. Um, they didn't, you know, they weren't affiliated or anything like that. And, uh, in, instantly got hooked. And that, that trainer opened up, uh, the first CrossFit gym in Paso and, um, just fell in love with it and it, it changed my life. And, uh, so, a couple of gyms later, a um, good buddy of mine decided to open up CrossFit Ergo here. And um, yeah, so that was about five years ago. That now, Ergo. and you guys, uh, so you guys were members at CrossFit Ergo. Were you guys there since it opened? I was. I helped I helped the old owner out with running his membership software and, and just kind of keeping up because he, you know, he wasn't very techie at all. Um, so there were, he needed a lot of help in that department. So I set up the, you know, the membership software and was doing the billing, um, in exchange for a key and, um, a free membership, you know? So I was kind of, I was part of it the whole time. Um, Steven was just a regular member. Yeah. And, uh, met him at the 5:30 AM classes and, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool to, uh, connect with him just totally by accident. Right. And Steve's also a business owner in your guys' area. He works in the events business, um, which is, I think, why he couldn't be here today. He's had a lot going on uh, recently. But um, you guys are a pretty cool combination because, you know, your experience in sales and in, I think, really having to like uh, just what uh, the dynamic of being in real estate, right, has given you a whole set of skills and obviously your personality. And then you take that with Steve's personality and his set of skills and building his company. Um, you guys, you guys put together, you guys come together as a really good team. And that was something that really stood out to me immediately when we started working together, that you guys are very complimentary. Um, how did it, how was the evolution from, Hey, we're doing five thirty class together. And I just kind of help out here to let's buy this gym. How would, how did that evolution happen? It, um, it's kind of a funny story. Like, uh, I, I've known our coaches for a long time because um, we were all over at CrossFit Inferno together and we came over here. Um, they were only coaching one or two days a week. and But everybody could kind of feel how the gym was kind of going downhill 
the owner was checking out. He brought in another business partner that really wasn't um, doing much for the business and members were leaving like crazy and it just, just had this weird vibe to it. And we were honestly scared we'd come in Monday morning and all the equipment would be gone. Right. Um, it was just kind of this, we joked about it, but I think in the back of our head, we're like, oh shoot, he's going to just sell it off and not tell anybody. <laughs> um, and one of our coaches just took me to the side cause I've been talking about owning a gym for a long time and it's such an active part in it. Um, one coach took me aside and he's like, do something. And I thought, all right, well, this is the sign that, you know, it's time. Um, so I started talking to the owner, started, you know, discussing things and word got out to Steven and we were leaving. It was still dark one day. We we're just leaning on the back of his truck and he's like, Hey, you want some help? Like, I'm really interested. I like this place. I don't want to see it, it go away. Um, and one thing led to another, we were just like, sure, I'll take some help. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I thought I was going to do it on my own hindsight. Like there's no way, there's no way without Steven that this place would still be around and he will probably say the same thing. Well, I think, uh, like I said, you guys, you guys make a really good combination because he's, you know, he's helping more from the back end and like the, the vision, I think side of it. And you, well, I actually, I'd say you very much in the vision as well. I think he's just coming in with a different set of skills. Um, and able to support from afar where you're the guy kind of on the ground doing a lot of the heavy lifting day to day. Um, so you guys, okay. So you guys acquired the gym and what was the evolution? What, what, what was it like from the time that you bought it to right before you and I spoke? Well, we knew we had to change some stuff. Uh, so first decision we made right away was to make our two coaches full time. We knew that was going to be a very expensive decision but we felt one, they are, there's a couple of the best coaches I've ever met. And I've been to a lot of CrossFit gyms, um, been doing this a long time and, and they're phenomenal. You know, if they ever listen to this, hopefully they don't get a big head, but like they truly are really good. So that was number decision. Number one, I'm not, that's not necessarily my wheelhouse. And I, we have other jobs. We can't coach five classes a day. Um, so we made them full time cause they're the product, you know, they're creating the experience for the members during that hour. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we just started doing some remodeling. Um, the gym wasn't really set up, right. It wasn't welcoming when you come in. So we cleaned a lot of stuff up, re actually added a lobby. There was no lobby. It was just like a blank room with a t-shirt hanging on a rack. Um, you know, added on some equipment, you know, bought some more bikes, bought some more runners, uh, bought a couple of runners and some, uh, you know, a lot more equipment, finish out the flooring. Really, we wanted it to look nice. We wanted to have actually something that people would be excited to go. Um, and then we just changed the programming, um, felt that, you know, the programming was not so great. And so we steal it. I don't write it. <laughs> and... Uh, just started making some changes, making it run like a business instead of like, okay, if people want to come work out, they can work out here. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't a, a business at the time. So we just trying to started to clean it up. And then we made the mistake of throwing a bunch of money at, uh, hired a Facebook guy for maybe a month and, um, just burned through some money that way. And that was, that did not work at all. And yeah. at the, t at the time, you know, when you switch over like that, um, there's some fallout. There were a lot of people who didn't want change. They didn't want a community and we lost, you know, a good, good chunk of members. Um, you know, we had one lady leave because we programmed a 5k and she thought we were trying to kill people. It, I don't know. Fitness. <laughs> what are you trying to get us to do? Be well-rounded around here? Um, yeah. And it was just, they were very, a lot of people were very resistant because it was just this same way for a long time. Um, right. and then we, we Hey, we're going to throw a, a party. We're like, what? You know, what yeah. are you doing? Yeah. It's, I, I think that's a, an interesting point because a lot of times, you know, when people are uh, in the position that you guys were in, where you see the opportunity to take over a gym, that's clearly, 
you know, being treated much more like a hobby than a, a real sustainable, healthy business. And you think, man, look at all this low hanging fruit of improvements we could make to the physical facility, to the program, to, you know, the events that we do. And, you know, then you, you buy the business with assumptions that, you know, hopefully these people will all love this and be grateful that we did it. And then we can just add on to that. And then what happens is, is that you have the, the rude awakening of, oh my gosh, that's not what everybody wanted. A lot of people liked that it was casual and kind of grimy and, you know, and so on. And it can, it can really take the wind out of your sails when you're trying to turn things around, especially financially, because you, you know, you make plans based on what's currently there. And then that changes unexpectedly and it can put you in a pretty tough spot. So here we are, you guys had some fallout and you, you burned a bunch of cash on these Facebook ads that, or this Facebook guy that didn't help you much. Um, what, what was it that had you reach out? Well, um, I had, you know, I'm constantly listening to podcasts all the time, you know, never really listen to music in the car anymore, unless I'm in a bad, really bad mood, you need to pick me up or whatever. And, you know, I had come across you somewhere along the line, um, back when the gym first opened, like we had a, a consultation call about, you know, some software you guys were doing mm. at the time. Um, and at that point, somehow I ended up on your mailing list and was listening to your podcast and, and, um, and then I decided to reach out one day to, uh, like I, you know, had a call with you or something. And then I reached out to our buddy, Wes Pyatt up in Gilroy, who mm -hmm. owns Coast Range CrossFit. And, um, if anybody on here knows Wes, just, he's, he's pretty incredible person and he's always available. Like he's got his own gym running, but he would always take my call. Always, you know, I said, tell me about this Marcus guy, right? And, uh, Wes totally recommended you. He said, you helped him out. And, um, so, so I talked to Steven. I was like, well, if Wes says he's cool, he, you know, he wouldn't <laughs> lie to me. <laughs> well, and it wasn't like the, you, you, you know, you weren't really a stranger cause I'd been listening to you, you know, you had already helped because, you know, I had already implemented some of that lead follow up, um, right, you know, from right. some of your podcasts already. And, um, so it was just. It was the thing, you know, the turning point, like, Hey, we got to do something different. Right. Awesome. So, well, first of all, uh, love Wes, one of my favorite people in this entire industry, such a good dude. Um, if you're listening, what's up Wes. Um, and, um, all right. So you guys, you reached out and we, I, we really hit it off on the call. I felt like, you know, when you kind of laid the story out, it was, it was very clear to me that you guys had kind of gotten in, I don't want to say a little over your head, but you guys were in a, you guys were in a tough spot because it was, you guys are already burning cash and because you're in the red every month, but you had this thing that you wanted to see win, and you guys had, you guys had all the key ingredients to being successful. You had really good product with good coaches. You had you who were very, um, you were very aware of what was going on and you cared a lot about both the staff and the community and you were fully available to basically do all the heavy lifting necessary to get this thing turned around in a short amount of time. And, um, yeah, so man, we started and it's been a wild ride ever since, man, you guys have done, uh, we've made a ton of changes in the business over the last couple of months or last few months. Um, let me see here. What, what would you say? What was there an aha moment for you as you were going through the program to where you realize like, okay, things are starting to turn around for us. Um, yeah, it was right. I think it was the next week after we had, you know, I'm calling it the therapy call. Like Steven was on the call and I was just frustrated and you were saying, no, this is, I told you this would happen. I told you this would feel this way. And it was just, it's at that point where you've done a lot of the work, but it hasn't, you know, quite gained traction. It hasn't snowballed yet. And it's probably at that point where I think 80% of people go, I'm done. I, this isn't going to work. Um, exactly and right. I just remember, I think I called Steven afterward and apologized. I'm like, man, I'm sorry. I was just frustrated and a whiny butt on that call. And, um, it was like the next week did 
four intro sessions in a week and like it, it was just at that point, right? Um, just started to started to work. Right. And you guys signed up all four of those sessions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Now you guys are almost done with the program. You haven't even completely finished it yet. You guys have one, we have one more week to go to kind of button things up. What would you say has been the single biggest accomplishment since starting this program? I, to pick one, that's kind of crazy. Cause I mean, we've literally changed almost everything about the business. It truly is a business now versus just a, a box, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think getting the systems in place, getting, you know, knowing our value, um, as painful as that first week was when we did our clarity and figured out who really truly is our, our membership, mm -hmm. who we, who do we want here? Um, that might've been the single biggest thing because that for me was really hard. I'm like, tell me what to price it. Tell me what ads to run. Tell me what to say to people. Like, give me the bullet points and I'm going to go take action. I'm going to go do it. Right. But when, when we took that step back and said, no, we want to know why we're doing it, who we're helping. Um, that was pretty huge. And it's still so fresh, even though it was months and months ago, like when someone walks in that door, I already know whether they're going to be a good fit because we know who our, our membership, we want that to be. And it helped us eliminate all the, I would hate to use the word, but toxicity mm -hmm. in the environment. Um, they either went away on their own or we kind of cleaned a few out and we finally lost the last negative member right. and it's made a huge difference. Right. I, I think it's one of those things where people get so afraid of losing a little to win big. Right. And the winning big isn't just necessarily in you building a more successful business and the numbers getting healthier, but just your experience. And, and knowing, hey, we now have the right configuration with the right people. We know who it is that we want to serve and that we can knock it out of the park for. And I mean, we rebuilt everything in, in CrossFit Ergo from the, you know, first of all, from just clarifying all that, but then saying, okay, the whole sales system and lead management, which you'd already done a bit of, but we dialed in further, we systematized everything. And even down to like your time management and priority management, um, and dude, one thing I would say about you, man, is that you were Johnny on the spot with implementation better than most people I've seen. And that is the difference between, you know, between what you guys have accomplished in such a short amount of time versus what most people do, which is they, you know, they kind of phone it in. They aren't really willing to commit to their dream the same at the same level and with the same vigor that you had. And you, I mean, every time we would get on the calls, I mean, your homework updates and like we did this, this, this and pending this year, it, it was so refreshing to see, you know, the motivation, not just in the conversation, but the motivation translating into action. And that's why you guys were able to get this thing turned around in a really short amount of time. And now, I mean, it's only, it's just the end of January now, 2020. And now we have all the big pieces in place, all the systems in place from content strategy to your acquisition and integrating and your onboarding and your, your, all your prices got fixed, your policies, and now doing these guerrilla marketing campaigns to help you guys actually drive some numbers in to help you guys build this thing the right way. Um, it's been a lot of fun, man. And it's really exciting to see where, how far you guys have come in a short amount of time because I see a lot of people go through an almost identical scenario to what you guys went through and most end up just failing. And it's really unfortunate because these are people who loved the gym and they wanted to make it happen. And the reason it ends up falling out is because they, they're not willing to ask for help or they don't realize that when you take over ownership, it's even if it's you from someone inside the gym, not some new person coming from the outside, but that you have to make it yours. You have to completely revamp, right? The, the, the mission, the purpose of the business, the ideal clients have to get refined around who you now want to serve and what you define as success and how you want the culture to go. 
and you know what your resources are and get everything in alignment with that rather than just inheriting all the stuff from the previous owner and trying to make that work. That's usually why most will struggle and unfortunately eventually fail. And you had the wherewithal really quickly. I mean, you, it was only like six months after you guys, I think had purchased the gym before we had talked, wasn't it? Like maybe four to six months. Yeah. Yeah. About that. Yeah. Something like that. That's really quick. And I'm, and I'm working with, uh, with actually another uh, gym owner at the moment who she contacted me and got the ball rolling before she even made the transition, which is even better because now we can really help make it all run smoothly and all that. But, um, you've done a phenomenal job, man. And I think it's, and that's why I wanted to bring you on because in just what the two and a half months, almost three months that we've been working together. Now you have completely turned this business around and you're already starting to see the, the path forward now on, on what this business can actually look and feel like to run because it's in alignment with what you wanted and Steve wanted. And really now everyone in that community wants right from your staff down to your newest members. And everything is now pointing in the right direction, man. Awesome job. Yeah, they're they're excited. And, and one of the things that we are now implementing is that the ambassador program. And so in our coaches meeting, we you know identified people that were, and remember on our call, I'm like, why would anybody want to do this? Um, so that just every single person that I've asked, I was like, hey, you know, we're kind of starting this thing. They've lit up. They're like, oh my God, you want me to do this? And like, yes, yes. And I'm like, I haven't even told you what it is. And, and it <laughs> People just want to contribute, man. That's yeah, how it, it is. It's, 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 it's nurturing the tribe like structure that you have within this business and, and leveraging it to everyone's advantage, not just the business's advantage. You're not taking advantage of anyone. You're giving people the opportunity to participate who want to participate. And it creates, it creates a, a bigger purpose for them inside this community. And that's why that's this stuff works. It isn't about, uh, you know, aggressive Facebook ads always, or it isn't about, you know, this gimmicky referral thing or whatever. It, it's about activating those people inside your community and helping having them participate in building. And, and in your case, rebuilding that community and, and reestablishing in that the 2.0 version of CrossFit Ergo. Yeah. Love yeah, it, man. Just, it, it feels good. And um, it's the, the better it gets, the more, the momentum we get, the, the more energy, the community and the membership is getting, it just makes it like you want to just do more and more and more. Yeah. I love it, man. Good for you. And really well done. Um, what's next for you with your business? Um, just finishing up, um, the last little, the last few bits of, uh, content that we have kind of going on and, and getting it all settled and having our operations manual and automating so much of it so that, you know, it's, it's sustainable. Um, so that me and Steven are able to kind of run our other businesses at the same time and, you know, just make things a little bit smoother. And then at some point they'll maybe, maybe we'll have you help us open up a second location. Um, I feel you know, we've always talked about it, but you know, now that we have our, our business set, it's just a matter of, we, we can duplicate it. We can scale it. Right. Awesome, man. Well, again, I applaud you. Um, you, you really rolled your sleeves up and took a, a very challenging situation and completely turned it around in legitimately less than 90 days, man. Uh, awesome work. And that, that is only because of your attention to detail and your execution. That's what it comes down to. I can give you all the tactics and, and systems and tools there are, but if you don't take them and truly make them your own and implement wholeheartedly the way that you and Steven have, um, it's not going to have that same kind of impact. And you, you really embrace that process and you have, uh, the proof now to, to enjoy for yourself, man. So great job. And thanks for coming Thank on today and sharing your story, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, we said, well, if we do everything Marcus tells us to do and it doesn't work, we can just blame him. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> That's my and least favorite thing to hear, but all right, <laughs> it worked. So it's all good. Well, uh, Mike, thank you for taking the time. Thank you for coming on and sharing your story. Uh, hopefully that's inspired some other people. Uh, final question for you. If you could give one piece of advice to another gym owner, what would it be? Um, and this is kind of 
a little bit about Wes kind of gave me this advice, but it didn't stick. Um, it's going to be as fun as you think it's going to be and even more fulfilling when you do it right. Um, but it's going to be harder and take longer and take more time than you think it will be. Uh, a lot. Harder. And you're going to have your ups and downs, but you know, that, and I guess that's just with life with business anyway. Um, but be ready to grind and, and work on it. And I promise you, it'll be worth it when you get there. Great advice, ma'am. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's I, in my opinion, one of the best lifestyle businesses on the planet. If you like helping people and you want to have fun all day and you I mean, you're literally the best part of everyone's day on the hour, every hour that you have people coming in to see you. Um, legitimately doing something huge for them in their life. Um, that's really powerful. And when you get it right, you can even make a great living doing it. So Mike, thanks again for coming on and thank you for everyone who uh, joined us today. I hope this episode was inspiring to you. Uh, and if you're interested in learning how we can help you turn your gym into a thriving business, then I want to invite you to schedule a free breakthrough session with me where we'll get to know you, your situation, and see how we might be able to help you get where you're trying to go. That's it for today. We'll see you on the next episode. Until then, bye-bye.